We're here at Camp Alphaville, and obviously we're talking about Brexit. I'm here with Katie Martin, head of Fast FT. Katie, it's been an absolutely insane week in British politics, which is both depressing and to an American, a little bit heartening because we're <laughs> not the only ones. Yeah. But in terms of uh, the potential outcomes for the British economy, the EU and markets, what have we really learned? Well, first of all, I'm glad that we've given you some entertainment and light relief and proof that it's not just you guys that are crazy. But um, yeah, the, the verdict from the markets has been abrupt and very clear, which is this is extremely bad news for the British economy. Clearly, the market wasn't positioned for this, but nonetheless, the, the scale of the drop in sterling was quite something this time last week. And it very much tells you that the market thinks recession is coming. There's really no way to dress this up. It thinks that we've just walked, leapt into a full-blown recession that's going to necessitate rate cuts pretty soon. You saw what Carney was saying yesterday about how you know it's going to be necessary to take action probably this summer, probably restarting some QE. So, you know, this is great if you happen to be short sterling, it's great if you happen to be long gilts, um, but it's, it's a very messy situation. One uh, good silver lining, I guess, or one po positive point to bring through here is that everyone's been astonished at how well the markets have functioned. You know, the liquidity has been there. In the, in the panel session I was doing earlier, even at two o'clock in the morning on Friday, it was possible to trade sterling, which isn't normally possible at the best of times. But it's clear that the contingency measures that have been brought in by central banks and by, you know, by dealer banks, they, they kicked in and they worked and the markets functioned. Um, but because the markets are functioning, the Bank of England's got absolutely no intention of stepping in the way of the sterling move. So it's come off about 10% so far against the dollar, and it's a very brave man who thinks it's going to pick up from here. You know what I found interesting is the diverse range of opinions on what this means for the EU, yeah. the US, and for globalization in general, right? Uh, people don't seem to know whether this uh, is a sign of worse things to come, or if this is something that will remain isolated to the UK, the EU, uh, and that it doesn't necessarily signify uh, that things are going to get worse everywhere. Well, the initial market reaction suggests that this won't necessarily be a global systemic shock to markets. In terms of what it means for the structure of the EU, honestly, it's anybody's guess. The, it, a lot obviously will depend on whether other countries decide to go their own way in the EU and whether the whole edifice falls apart. Genuinely, it's, it's a possibility. It's not an imminent possibility, but it is a possibility. And so all of a sudden we're having to read a whole new level of political risk into UK markets, into Eurozone markets, into EU markets that just wasn't there before. And quite frankly, no one knows how to do it. Katie Martin, you're the best. <laughs>